Good afternoon. Thank Good afternoon. You. Thank you to you, Servio Fernandez Belagor, for being here. Mm -hmm. Can you care to introduce yourself? Yeah, hello. Um, uh, thank you, for, first of all, for this, this opportunity. Um, as you mentioned, my name is Sergio Fernandez Balaguer. I work for the public transport company of Madrid, in Spanish, Empresa Municipal de Transportes de Madrid. It's a public company created in 1947, which initially was just a bus operator. Uh, but in the last years, we became a mobility operator. So since uh, 2014, well, 2013, actually, we've been uh, adding different mobility services to our portfolio, such as managing the underground parking facilities of the city uh, with 10, 23 underground garages with uh, more than 11 parking lots. Then the bike sharing system, the public bike sharing system of the city, fully formed by Pedelex, electric bikes, with uh, 2,500 and, and more than 200 uh, stations. Uh, the cable car of, of the city, uh, which has more a leisure purpose, but we are thinking of providing a, a really mobility service with it. Also the tow trucks, the cranes for parking enforcement, uh, and, um, and also charging infrastructure for electric vehicles in, in our parking facilities. So today we are the main uh, company uh, of it, its type in Spain, a public company fully owned by the city. And, uh, and we play quite a big role in, in the city ecosystem because daily uh, we transport about 1.6 million people. So right after the subway, we are the biggest um, uh, public transport provider. And uh, yearly, we uh, move around about 420 million passengers in the city of Madrid with uh, uh, 420 wow. million. Wow. Our fleet has about 2,050 buses, including all types of technologies, including fully electric, uh, compressed natural gas hybrids, um, diesel hybrids, uh, plug-in uh, hybrids, non-plug-in hybrids, even the first uh, commercial um, fully electric bus uh, line charging by induction, which is something quite innovative. Um, so we think, we consider ourselves, ourselves quite at the forefront of many, many topics. And one of them in which we started working some years ago was this mobility as a service. Uh, concept. So as we are part of the mobility ecosystem of the city, we find uh, we found out kind of a lack of integration when accessing to the public transport offer. And then, especially since 2014, when the first uh, shared mobility services came into scene in the city of Madrid, uh, we finally saw uh, the opportunity of improving um, the way people have access to, to the information of the whole mobility scenario. So today, for instance, since 2015 especially, Madrid has become uh, one of the cities in Europe, for sure, and maybe even in the world, with the widest electric, fully electric shared mobility offer. So today we have um, five uh, fully electric car sharing companies, free floating ones, plus two conventional station-based uh, car sharing companies, more than 2,500 vehicles, if, I, if, I, if I'm right. Then we have six um, fully electric motor sharing companies, so uh, like motorbikes with more than 4,100 and six companies. And more recently, uh, last August, uh, it's when the first e-scooter company arrived to the city. Um, and um, and uh, the beginning was kind of a bit messy. Um, so that's why the city uh, took the opportunity of regulating it uh, via the new sustainable mobility by law of the city, the new mobility ordinance that was approved uh, last October. And uh, this way, these e-scooter companies need to apply for a license to operate in the city. And uh, I think it was last February when the city uh, provided those licenses to uh, 19 different companies uh, with a total number of about 9,000 e-scooters. So this is just to give you a, 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 an idea on, on how all these uh, 
transport ecosystem works because beyond that when thinking about public transport in madrid we have also the the train the regional trains which are managed by the uh, the national government then we have the subway which is managed by the regional government and which is i think the eighth biggest in the world um, and and then we have all the the different buses and bus companies that provides the the service uh, the interurban service so connecting madrid city with different municipalities around and little villages far away so in total in in madrid there are about 41 41 uh, public transport operators including public companies and private companies and all that is is it's coordinated by the regional transport authority, the transport authority, which is called Consorcio Regional de Transportes de Madrid. Okay. CRTM. Those are the that's the acronym CRTM. And and this this transport authority is in charge of uh, planning infrastructure, coordinating the services, uh, the fare integration, and the branding. Um, so. Initially, the logical approach would be, okay, let's develop a mobility as a service initiative from the regional transport authority, because they, they are the ones that have, let's say, kind of the, the wider scope. Uh, but well, we, we started um, um, first, though, though we are cooperating together in, in some projects uh, to, to develop uh, the multimodal platform that integrates all the information. That, by the way, has been developed under the framework of uh, a Civitas project funded by the European uh, Commission called uh, Eccentric. So that platform right now is up and running. And we are carrying out uh, the Mobility as a Service initiative on behalf of the city of Madrid. So that would be more or less the summary. Okay. That's already very detailed, and I now look forward to asking you a bit more in-detailed questions. Mm -hmm. To introduce support center data sharing, so the support center for data sharing is an EU initiative that focuses on researching, documenting, and reporting on data sharing practices, EU legal frameworks, and the different access and distribution technologies that are relevant to the organization and businesses. Mm -hmm. So, in essence, the SCDS aims to raise awareness among businesses, public bodies, academia, and citizens and people alike about the benefits, the challenges, and the possibilities of data sharing. In addition, we aim to learn from stakeholders such as yourself about why they are sharing data in the first place, what kind of benefits they get, the challenges they face, and why they would recommend it for others and for society as a whole. Mm -hmm. So the purpose of this interview will be to look at what inspired the City of Madrid and yourself to create Mas Madrid, how you are doing it, what kind of legal arrangements and technical mechanisms were selected to use for Mas Madrid and why, mm -hmm. as well as what the potential economic benefits of sharing data for the actors involved are, and then a future plan. What do you see next for the mobility industry or for the City of Madrid? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so... Um... <laughs> Well, as, as I previously mentioned, uh, our aim was to uh, improve the access to um, all the, the, the public transport and shared mobility offer with a, we could say, kind of a holistic approach or maybe, um, yeah, ultimate goal, which is convincing people, convincing citizens that there is no need of making use of the private car. Uh, today in Madrid, Madrid is quite a big city and we share the main challenges that other big cities share, especially when thinking about commuting. And um, there were some uh, previous or, or initial uh, conclusions of uh, some studies that were carried out in Spain. For instance, ATUC, which mm -hmm. is the, the Spanish Association of, of Public Transport Operators, uh, they carried out a study in 2017 that showed that uh, among cities with more than 1 million inhabitants, there was a huge percentage of people that had either no clue about which was the public transport offer in their city, or they have very little idea, which is quite relevant. I mean, it's quite impressive uh, because when thinking about the big cities in Spain, both not only Madrid, but also Barcelona or any others, um, there is quite a big public transport offer. So we thought, okay, why don't we combine the advantages of 
strong public transport networks with the potential of all these new shared mobility services that are coming up. And um, so that's why we decided to develop mobility as a service. Uh, so we decided, okay, cities need to take care about, I don't know, air quality problems, uh, need to take care about the equity, uh, need to take care about accessibility, need to take care of uh, um, providing the best service uh, and most adapted to, to citizen needs, uh, but always taking into account as well uh, limitations of the use of the public space. Um, so, so congestion is also uh, a priority in, in the political agenda. Um, so all that is what convinced us that we should play kind of a leading role. Uh, that at the beginning uh, showed a lot of uncertainties because we thought oh, maybe the private share mobility operators are not that confident about sharing their data. And though it was quite a big effort, at the very end, we, we, well, we realized that it was not that difficult, maybe because we are a public company fully owned by the city. Mm -hmm. So our ultimate goal is not to make a benefit, uh, uh, you know, um, a profit, a uh, monetary profit out of it, but to contribute and help the city to achieve those goals of sustainable mobility, uh, better air quality, uh, more equity, uh, better accessibility, etc. So, so far we had a, quite a, an intensive uh, um, round of meetings with all the shared mobility operators, also with the public uh, transport authority, uh, and um, and we well we agreed on on developing the initiative. We did it into we are doing it actually in two phases. So the first phase is already completed, um, which was to make this first version of an aggregator. So integrating all the information from all the mobility providers. That we did it with our own resources um, and with some help of a former contract we had with a, with a private company that was helping us uh, developing also some internal initiatives. And then for the second phase, which is uh, adding the functionality of a route planner, uh, ticketing, payment, booking, etc. Uh, we launched a tender um, that was done, uh, I don't remember the exact date, I think it was, well, some months ago, I, I forgot the date. And, um, and the company uh, that was finally awarded started working on that a couple of months ago. So we expect to have, uh, to have it ready by maybe next autumn, this autumn that is coming up, or, or early winter. Um, and at the same time, in order to exchange information, share experiences, learn more about others, uh, we got involved in, 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 in some projects. Uh, one is the, 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 the one I mentioned, this Civitas Eccentric. We are mm -hmm. cooperating with the city of Stockholm. Uh, in, in Sweden, with Turku in Finland, with um, Munich in Germany, and with uh, Ruse in Bulgaria. And uh, one of the work packages is about this multimodal, multimodal platform and how to integrate all this multimodal information. So we have developed together with uh, the Regional Transport Authority this multimodal, plat multimodal, multimodal platform. But also another project called iMove, um, which is... Um, coordinated by Softeco, an Italian company, and with the support of the UITP, uh, the Union for uh, Public Transport, International Union for Public Transport, together with the cities of uh, Torino in Italy, Berlin in Germany, and um, Manchester in the UK. I think, I'm not forgetting any. Ah, and Gothenburg in Sweden, sorry. And, um, and for instance, within this project, we are exploring uh, uh, roaming functions. So how to make possible for a citizen in, in Berlin to come to Madrid and without using any additional app, so using the Berlin app, how to access to the uh, mobility offer in Madrid. Okay. So we are working on that. So extending Mass Madrid or just Mass in one city towards a more EU scale to incorporate other countries? Yeah, at least helping to remove the barriers. Okay. So, so figuring out what the different mass platforms around Europe need to take into account in order to 
to remove the barriers for a wider uh, scheme, let's say. So there are several mass projects already going on at different EU countries. So was Mass Madrid inspired or based off a different model that's already existent? Yeah, we, we, I mean, we, we, we take a closer look to those initiatives that were already uh, on their way. Mm -hmm. uh, some initiatives in Sweden, um, Ubigo, uh, other studies and initiatives in the UK, uh, steered by Transport for London. Um, also what is happening in Finland, mm -hmm. uh, Helsinki and all the Finnish companies. Yeah. And, um, and also we joined in the meantime the Mass Alliance, um, uh, which is uh, 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 managed by Ertico, and also uh, through the participation in different interna international networks, such as uh, Police Network, mm -hmm. uh, Eurocities, we are also trying to get the best of it and, and learn a lot, as much as possible, from other city initiatives in this regard. Okay. So, so as, a, as a brief summary, the idea is that we don't want to become um, the mass provider. Mm -hmm. uh, we would like private mass providers to um, at least uh, provide that information and, 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 and integrate the information in a way that is easily accessible to all and, uh, and uh, helping cities to achieve their goals. We are aware of uh, competitiveness, um, uh, data privacy, um, that, that there are some maybe uh, private companies may be reluctant about sharing data, sure. but that's, that's why I think at that specific point, the role of the public sector can be really valuable if we act as, as a kind of a third party, third trusted party mm -hmm. to make all the private parties feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. so, so, well, we are working on that. So we are still on the way. <laughs> That's going to be a work in progress. I think there's a lot yeah. of companies that are still hesitant on sharing data or um, yeah. about the ramifications of it. So that leads me to the question though, how many companies and public organizations are actually in Mass Madrid? I saw a few, eMove and Zigocar, and you have a, quite a list already. And you already have 41, um, I think it was 41 bus providers or just? Uh, in total is 41 uh, different uh, public transport operators. Yes. So uh, I, I include in, within that name, you, it's the subway company, the railway okay. company, uh, EMT, of course, mm -hmm. and, and also uh, smaller companies that provide these interurban buses. Okay. That is only about mass, let's say, mass, uh, mass public transport, okay. collective okay. public transport. Then we have all these private shared mobility operators. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, those five... Uh, uh, car sharing companies uh, plus the two station based ones also the six uh, motor sharing companies and the 19 uh, e-scooter companies so plus uh, the taxi companies which we are also integrating them and, and including them within mass madrid um yeah so there's so many, companies, recall, there's so many companies and organizations in there how is it aligning everyone's priorities and expectations into the application? I mean, we, we, we try to sell the idea that this is a win-win situation mm -hmm. because um, if they, uh, we are trying to convince them that if, if they agree on, on sharing data, even if it's anonymous data or anonymized data, so mm -hmm. that means that each private operator does not know uh, who is the operator of the offer, which is at the moment in the screen or, or are available in a certain area. So you just know that there are e-scooters, but you don't know that those are uh, VOI ones and those others are Lime ones. So just in an anonymized way. But what we are trying to, to, to make them uh, clear is that there is a big potential if we share information because we provide the whole amount of public transport users which are daily using the network in Madrid. I mean, EMT transport 1.6 million, but the subway company transport about 2 million or even more. Mm -hmm. uh, then you have the railway company. All those users at a certain point of the day can become potential users of shared mobility services, mm -hmm. either for the first or the last mile. 
So yeah. that's why we are trying to convince them because the main, let's say, uh, uh, driven force for a person to use their private car is whenever they have uncertainty about the length of the trip and the duration of the trip. Mm -hmm. So uh, especially duration of the trip. Uh, so if we, if we are able to remove that barrier by improving the, 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 the offer of mobility services and the certainty about the cost, the duration, and how to combine them, we think we will succeed in, in, in this, we could say, fight against the irrational private car use. Because most of the time, you know, uh, cities, we do have a lot of surveys and studies about uh, how much uh, time of the day a car is just left in the street without any single use. Um, and also the occupancy rate of a private car, which is in Madrid about 1.2 passengers per car, which is rather low. Um, so we, we, we think that the future um, needs to, to, to change this mindset and, and think that maybe the, the use of the private car is not the most um, or the best one. Yeah, yeah. the most, uh, the most uh, uh, intelligent way of, of, of moving around because it may cost you more, it may take more time. And uh, of course, it's not that sustainable. So that's the idea uh, okay. to, to make people, well, be more aware of, of the public transport offer and a shared mobility offer. Okay, and also, so all, you have this data coming in from all of these different companies. How is it, re, so my understanding is that it's redirected into the application itself. So there, none of the other companies or the organizations receive or know the other's data. It only goes to Mass Madrid. It goes, yeah. And, and for instance, if you access now to the first phase of Mass Madrid, which is already available in, for Android and iOS, what you see is the current offer. So uh, if you click, I don't know, you open the screen, you will see all the public transport offer and also all the shared mobility offer. If you click, for instance, in a car share, uh, and, and the icon of any car share which is available, uh, you will be redirected to the app of that uh, car sharing company. Okay. Um, but the idea is once we have uh, fully developed Mass Madrid, we will give the chance of either being redirected mm -hmm. to, the, to the, um, the, the private car sharing company or to complete the whole process via Mass Madrid app. Okay. And this way, we will be, uh, for instance, be able to provide some sort of incentive. So if you use, a, I don't know, a, a bus and then you use a, a, a shared bike, then you will get, I don't know, five points to get, a, I don't know, a free coffee at the coffee shop at the <laughs> public transport station. Mm -hmm. It's just an example. We haven't defined them yet. Yeah. But the idea is to be able to provide incentives to stimulate the demand mm -hmm. uh, towards the sustainable options. Also, whenever, for instance, uh, the city activates the high pollution um, uh, protocol, because the city has a protocol, so whenever we exceed a threshold of NOx, uh, we have to activate a protocol, and that protocol has five levels. Mm -hmm. uh, so in the worst scenario, that means that uh, severe um, car restriction supply. In this case, we will be we would be able through Mass Madrid to provide free rides mm -hmm. for um, for users for citizens uh, using this shared mobility offer, which is clean in Madrid, mm -hmm. and uh, also paying back the private operators because whenever they they the idea is that for for from the business model approach for all the trips completed via Mass Madrid. Mm -hmm. We have set a commissionist uh, business model. So we will, we will get like 3% of the total value of the trip that will go to a deposit. And that deposit will be used to pay the private share mobility operators back whenever we need to force for free rights. Okay, so if there are some car restrictions to use or whatever. From my understanding, so when the nitrate oxide levels are so high in Madrid, an alert is set by the government. Yeah. yeah. And once that alert is set, there are rides that are offered for free via the Mass Madrid app, so that to help to reduce the nitrogen oxide level in the atmosphere. 
Yeah, so that, that's, the, that's the idea. We haven't, we haven't uh, okay. used it yet. Yeah. The protocol is up and running, mm -hmm. but this, this possibility via uh, Mass Madrid hasn't been tested yet. Okay. It's just the idea we have in mind uh, and, and the business model we have in mind. So, so uh, the, the Mass Madrid will be uh, supported uh, or financed yeah. by, by, by uh, the municipality and, mm -hmm. and the different administrations involved, mm -hmm. plus uh, the, the income coming from this commission that we will ask the private uh, share mobility operators uh, for each trip which is completed, mm -hmm. the booked or the payment, etc., via Mass Madrid app. Okay, it's good to know. And you said earlier in the talk already that one issue is increasing awareness about mass applications. How mm -hmm. are you and um, EMT currently promoting Mass Madrid? Well, we haven't promoted it that much mm -hmm. yet because right now we have only the first phase. Yeah. So we, we don't want citizens to be disappointed about the the functionalities which are at the moment available which are not that many so we have uh, we have promoted it via press releases and uh, and the participation in different events mm -hmm. but we are doing it in a cautious way so mm -hmm. not really putting all the effort in promoting it until we have it fully developed okay, so and that is what will happen yeah by the end of this year yeah, so late and sometime in the autumn or the in the early, early winter. yeah early winter late autumn early winter. Yeah, the next version will then be uploaded. Yeah. All right. I had also a question: Are there mechanisms involved, or so you have a lot of data coming into this application to make it efficient and to show real time um, use or real time when the buses are coming or if there's a delay or what yeah. the situation in the car park is? Is there a standard? Um, is there a standard? Standard for the data sets coming in. Hmm, that question I'm not sure. Just let me check um, mm, mm, because I'm aware that we are working on big data, for instance, with all this bunch of data coming, uh, so we can better adapt even our own uh, transport offer and and also help the city uh, for a better mobility planning. Mm -hmm. uh, regarding the the standardization and the format that the the, these sharing mobility operators provide the data. Uh, we are working on that at the moment. So mm -hmm. via API, we get the information. Now we are creating standard API mm -hmm. to be used by all these uh, uh, transport providers or, or sharing mobility providers. So far, we are not using MDS, mm -hmm. but uh, we are trying to follow um, all the indications from the European Commission in the delegated um, reglement, it's the 2017 1926 mm -hmm. from uh, May 31st, 2017, uh, about yeah all this multimodality uh, data. So we are trying to to comply with these uh, uh, recommendations and indications from the European Commission, and in the meantime, trying to to work on on this sort of standard. Yeah. Okay. And for more generally, then, what kind of data is shared or used or relevant to Mass Madrid? Well, for sure, the location of all, all these services, the availability. Mm -hmm. So uh, right now, for instance, if you click on any of the services that are shown in the aggregator app, uh, you can see if it's available or not. Um, some uh, companies provide more data, such as the, the range, which is left. Because all these, most of these, I mean, I think almost all of them are uh, fully electric, so mm -hmm. that data is, is easy to, to show. Um, yeah, and uh, now something that is quite important uh, to know, but more on a user side, mm -hmm. is um, the areas of operation of all these services. So, um, especially for e scooters, the city has set some limitations in terms of geofencing. So areas where it is forbidden to park these e-scooters. So that is also some something quite relevant, but mostly from the user point of view. So so the user should have access to that, that information in order to avoid uh, being fined or, or penalized by, by the operator. Uh, so yeah, but mostly there are all the information that can make the, the service uh, yeah. As all-inclusive and incorporated as possible. Walking, yeah. yeah. 
Well, how are you addressing um, companies' confidence in sharing data? You mentioned at the very beginning. Yeah, that we are signing agreements. Okay. We are signing agreements with them. Okay. So it's a, it's a, there are bilateral agreements uh, between EMT and each of the mobility providers. Okay. And in those agreements, I'm a, are you using um, specific licensing or legal standards? So, for example, with each company, are you customizing your legal agreements on how you're sharing data or how data is being shared between them and the this Mass Madrid um, pool of data? Mm -hmm. Or is there already a legal framework established that... Well, the main one is the GDPR, so we are oh. compliant with that. And, uh, and the agreement has a kind of a fixed format, so we are not making big uh, modifications on that. I mean companies are agreeing on, on, on the, the terms which are reflected on their agreements. Okay. And also, who owns the intellectual property of the data collected, stored, or that goes through Mass Madrid? It's us. I mean, uh, all information um, is stored in our servers. Uh, we have enough capacity, and um, so we are the, the owners of the data. Okay. And at this moment, do you think um, with the current legal regulations with GDPR and with every standard that's set by the EU and Spain right now, do you feel that these amounts of legal regulations are helping you or hindering you in sharing data or in creating and supporting Mass Madrid? Well, so far we are not finding any relevant drawback. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and, and as we are a public company, uh, we are quite... Um, let's say, um, uh, aware of the, these concerns about privacy of data. Uh, we work with citizens and, 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 and we provide a public service. So, so everything needs to, needs to, to, to satisfy uh, citizenship. So, so everything about privacy, and it's, it's a priority for us. It's not a problem. Okay. I'm assuming that the data that is coming into Mass Madrid is anonymized. So you can't trace it back to any individual and it's uh, just a number in your system. Yeah, yeah. And at the moment that the data is, is made available for uh, third parties, is anonymized. So okay. it's, just, it's just a number. It's, it's, yeah. And to my understanding, these aggregated data is given or is shared with the um, City of Madrid to help with city planning, for example. How often do you share data or give or send the aggregated data to help with planning? Well, uh, we will share the data with the city of Madrid. So far, we haven't started yet because the, 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 the app is not really fully functional. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's the aim. Okay. So I don't know yet which will be the frequency. The idea is that um, the city should have real-time access to that because the city may need to, to monitor uh, the functioning uh, of these services uh, permanently. So we are fully owned by the city. So the frequency will be decided by the city itself. And the data that is being shared, well, the data that is being shared in real time to on the application and also with the city, in your feeling, should it be made open or is any of this data already open? Well, that depends um, because uh, both EMT and Madrid City Council, we need to comply to some transparency goals. Both of us, we do have uh, open data portals providing information. So for those services that depends directly on us, such as the bus service mm -hmm. or uh, the bike sharing uh, system, that data is already available in open data, uh, is open. Uh, so that's not a problem. For um, the data coming from private operators, uh, it will be shared among the different uh, participants in Mass Madrid in this anonymized way. But as far as I know, at least not at the beginning, I think it, it will not be uh, offered in, in an open to the rest. But yeah, I mean, everything which depends directly on the city council or EMT is subject to these open data principles. Mm -hmm. uh, but information coming from third parties is subject to the limits on, on, on agreements mm -hmm. signed among the parties. Okay. And I know that you're now planning towards phase two and to your launch at the end of this year, sometime in the next few months. Mm -hmm. And I understand that this new launch will allow users to know the best options of how to get from point A to B. 
including their preferences, their reservations, numbers, their ticketing, and their payment options. Yeah. What, once this is launched, what do you see for Mass Madrid going forward? Well, we could find different um, ways to go forward. I mean, of course, we would like to have a great success um, and be widely used. Um, we would like first to have an increase of the use of public transport. That would be great. Um, but the main goal would be to see a reduction in the number of private car traffic. Okay. So even if that's not, that doesn't generate a direct um, benefit to us or, or revenue, um, indirectly, it helps us a lot because our buses run through the roads. And if there is less traffic, our buses uh, have a higher commercial speed, keep the frequency better, and uh, the service is better provided. So, so, as I mentioned, the ultimate goal is to see a reduction in the private car use. Then, of course, we would like to see this mass initiative uh, being taken also by, at the regional level. To, to better cover everything which is commuting and um, and yeah and, and, and overall improving the mobility around the city so on, on kind of ideal scenario we even put in mind to see that I don't know in a two years time a better solution uh, comes uh, to market and, 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 and makes uh, I don't know things easier for all of us we do it because we think it's our obligation as a public institution, as a public company, to improve the city and, 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 and the way of living. But uh, as I also mentioned before, we are not really market driven. So we don't expect uh, a direct benefit, monetary benefit out of it. Okay. We will be more than happy having a better air quality, uh, fluent, uh, more fluent traffic, less car traffic, and, and, and a yeah, a better place to live. That also links um, or leads to another question I had. Are there any revenues from this application? No, no. Beyond this commissioned, uh, commissionist business model to provide, to be able to pay back uh, to the private uh, mobility operators if we need to offer free rights, there are no revenues coming. We haven't uh, considered yet any sort of a sponsorization or including advertisements. So at the moment, there are no further income sources. Okay. But to run and to maintain Mass Madrid, it costs money. Does the money come from the government or from sponsorships or from? From, from the government. It's uh, public money. Okay. Good investment. So what, realistically, where do you see Mass Building off the earlier question, realistically, where do you see Mass Madrid in three years, or in five years, or in ten years? Oof, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can pick a year. Uh, to be honest, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it's it's difficult to to ask to that. Um, yeah, honestly, I don't know. Okay. It's too er it's too early. What I can tell you that that's for sure is that. Um, we share the same opinion as many other cities in Europe mm -hmm. uh, about which is the role of the public sector. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for instance, we have the same approach as uh, Ile-de-France uh, in yeah. the Paris region, or, or also Amsterdam, in which is the role that the public, trans uh, public sector must play. So, um, yeah, something... Uh, right now, we are some way in between model two and four, according to the four different levels that were indicated by, by UATP report. Uh, maybe more towards the, the, the second, if I remember well. But uh, anyway, it's, the, 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 the public sector must, must act as a, as a trusted party to kind of set the rules of a, of a fair game okay. among all the, the different operators, yeah. Okay. And what do you see being one of the biggest challenges or the different challenges to Mass Madrid helping, to Mass Madrid achieving its goal, to reaching its goal of convincing people not to use the private car and to have a future with less cars on the road? Yeah, well, the first challenge we, we found is the, the lack of digitalization 
mm -hmm. uh, of the public transport in Madrid. So beyond this integration we have via the regional transport authority, the truth is that not all the public transport operators have the same level of digitalization. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is triggering, I mean, that can become a, a real challenge because uh, we need to, to, to have the same level to be able to provide ticketing and payment, etc. cetera. Yeah. So that would be the first one. Um, then the second one is more linked to, to policies because the aim is that all these mass ecosystems should be capable to provide advantages to the third, let's say, big stakeholders we have uh, in the scenario, which is the user, the citizen, so the most accurate service adapted to their preferences, but then operators, so make them be part of a profitable business, mm -hmm. not losing money and, 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 and generating uh, business, but also the city. So uh, helping the city achieving their goals. So that's, uh, that I think is the, the, the most difficult equation to have the three main stakeholder groups happy. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and that is what we will be working a lot. So, uh, yeah, digitalization was the first challenge. Yeah. And, and then also, I mean, the change starts also in our own mindset. So, of course, the service, the app must be accurate, uh, must provide the, the best suitable service for the user. Uh, must be um, kind of uh, advantages in, in terms of pricing, and but also must help to let's say educate uh, uh, users in the the um, the effect of their personal choices mm -hmm. when deciding how to move around the region. So sometimes we we also have read a lot of articles and studies about the way we think or better said, the way we don't think about the externalities of using our own private cars. We think about, okay, just the fuel, you buy it, but then you forget about it, or even the parking price. But whenever you have the parking uh, solved, at least in Madrid, that's the, the biggest uh, parameter that influences private car use. Whenever you have parking for free, either at the region or destination. So we need to be smart enough to... To, to provide an alternative to the private car use. Okay. And yeah, it's, it's not easy. It's, <laughs> it's yeah, it's quite, um, yeah. Yeah, lack of digitalization is a problem global wide, or it's also difficult just to get um, every organization into the same standard or up to speed with each other so that it can translate across. Yeah. But so let's say that all of these three issues were resolved. They were not existent. What would you want or what, in a utopian world where these three issues don't exist, where you have all the resources, all the support, and everyone wants to achieve these goals, what mm -hmm. do you see for Mass Madrid in the future? Wow. Or what do you see for Mass Mobility in general in the future? Okay, so if we think about this ideal scenario, I see Mass Madrid as the best service ever providing accurate information <laughs> real-time information everybody happy about that um really uh combining uh, uh, all the means of transport um in a seamless way first seamless that's important and relevant also uh in a very efficient way in terms of energy efficiency of the trip sustainability of the trip uh, potentially zero emissions ones and um, and really we having a very good ratio cost effectiveness so yeah I, I, I think that would be the ideal scenario I don't know if we will achieve it uh, but I don't know either if this answers to your question so <laughs> it links to it it's a direct link and I, I see where I see the goal do you think that we will ever achieve mass EU or mass global? I, I find it quite difficult, to be honest. I need that. We need a clear rules uh, that apply Europe-wide first. Um, 
I think we need some convergence of the, the priorities of the different stakeholders involved. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, data sharing, uh, data standardization is key. Uh, I think open data principles are also very relevant to, to, to get this goal. Um, so at the moment I see kind of difficult because it happens a little bit the same that happened with electric vehicle. So electric vehicle almost didn't exist at all, exist at all and suddenly people were talking about smart charging when there were even no electric vehicles in the market. So with this is more or less the same. I think the mobility as a service apps, which are at the moment kind of function functioning, um, have a geographical scope, maybe at city level. Mm -hmm. uh, so we need first to, to go step by step before going to a Europe global, um, you know, scheme. There are many uh, uncertainties yet, uh, even at, at the regional level or national level. And uh, the cooperation among public administration is key, uh, at least from our point of view. Uh, this clear set of rules at a national level and, and Europe, Europe, European level, also taking into account that probably cities are the ones um, better positioned to steer this process, but cities don't have direct um, communication with the European Commission. Or the European Union, so those are national state the state members, but not cities. So, in this process, we can miss some sort of, you know, dialogue and 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 and, and potential. So yeah, I must admit that I'm not that optimistic at the moment. Yeah. With how the EU rules and regulations are, do you see it going towards a direction that can help mass EU, for example, or do you see it being more hindering would you mind to repeat the question again please with how the e with the current eu rules and regulations the gdpr and the copyright mm -hmm. laws and what what um whatever else is coming following that do you see that as supporting mass eu mass madrid um, Sto uh, stockholm amsterdam or do you see it as being more restrictive well i think um maybe it is uh, a bit restrictive but I think it's necessary I mean uh, I think in the process it's better to avoid uh, making mistakes so um, I'm, I'm quite um, um, let's say quite aware of, of uh, privacy issues and I think it's better not to, to make mistakes uh, in this regard um, I think it's 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 just about the, the scope of what we want to achieve. I mean, uh, for instance, if we think about Europe as a whole, we need to include for sure boats uh, and ships and, and, and planes and, and, and airlines. I mean, so, and I don't know how, how, how developed is that mm -hmm. and how possible is that in the short term. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then we have also uh, all these new, um, yeah, uh, kind of disruptive services, which people are starting to talk about, such as drones or uh, air transportation, air taxis, etc. So sometimes all that makes some sort of noise around the main idea. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. We have enough with the city of Madrid, to be honest, at the moment. <laughs> First Mass Madrid, then we can look maybe into the future. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Another question on my part is, we had discussed this also earlier, is that there are a lot of different stakeholders and a lot of parties involved. For Mass Madrid, you have public bodies and you have businesses. But in a broader picture, as we've already discussed, the public bodies, the government bodies, the businesses and citizens all have different expectations and all have different priorities. Moving forward, how do you see being able to facilitate communication and collaboration so that the priorities are more aligned to achieve mass or mass mobility of the service? Uh. Well, maybe listening to users, which are the ones that have the need of moving around, 
Uh, but it's also, I mean, I think in this process, um, um, this is just my personal opinion, uh, but I think we need to, I mean, we, th we need to think that in this global world, mobility is, is absolutely a priority, but sometimes the best option is not to move at all. So that means that we need to take advantage also about technologies uh, and, and maybe there are trips, trips that can be avoided. Um, so um, mobility as a service would be the best solution whenever you need to make a trip but we should work at the same time in how to avoid unnecessary trips for instance mm -hmm. and I'm, now i'm thinking as a kind of part of a city government so mm -hmm. so it's not it's not just about increasing mobility on the best in the best way but also how to how to reduce the mobility which is not strictly needed and um yeah i think yeah uh, no, that doesn't, that doesn't answer your, your question, I'm afraid. But. No, it's a very broad and a difficult question. I think not many people will have an idea or there's no clear, straightforward way to adjust that, which is why we... Yeah, I think it's, I mean, um, sometimes, I mean, for instance, to, to know uh, in the best way and most accurate way, which are the patterns of the mobility of people, or when I say people, it's also logistics which is uh, one of the biggest challenges ahead for cities, especially with e-commerce. Uh, now, uh, every single home, every single flat becomes a shop with e-commerce. And, uh, and, and maybe mobility as a service can be part also of that solution. Uh, so be, be used by, by, by logistic operators. Or, so um, it's, it's difficult to know uh, and, and to have the... the, the the best picture of the mobility needs generally when you need to carry out a very extensive surveys uh, that takes a lot of time and when you get them the situation has changed so it's 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 not that easy it's but i think it i mean we should try to provide the most yeah adapted service to 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 citizens needs then the final question for me then is what would you say to people or companies that are hesitant to share data that don't have the confidence or don't or believe it's too difficult with too many constraints? Uh, I think that they should uh, first be aware that sharing data uh, is not a risk if you set proper rules to do it uh, and can generate a lot of benefits. And most of the times it's just about setting which is the win-win scenario for, for the parties which are involved, especially when they share data with public administrations. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't want to be competitors and we don't want to be uh, unfair. Um, we just want the benefit of all of us, including them as users and, and citizens. So data sharing should be something to take into account seriously. Also, when you think about a public administration, which sometimes is not that easy, but we, I mean, we didn't think uh, about opening up our data since ever, because at the beginning we thought we are the owners of data and we don't want to share it. But at the very end, you realize that all the data that the public administration generates is generated by citizens and, and we are due to serve citizens so so that's why we decided to open uh, our data back in in 2006 so so those two main approaches should be maybe those to take into account i think it's it's of course data is valuable uh, but there are always ways to share data without generating negative impacts to the owner of that data whoever it is mm -hmm. yeah. well thank you very much I will end the recording in a moment, but thank you for your time, Sergio. And Thanks it was to you. Insightful, and we really appreciate it. Okay. Yeah, it was a pleasure.